New House Speaker Mike Johnson has started to detail how he plans to govern after weeks of GOP turmoil by keeping the House GOP united, even if their bills have no chance of becoming law. He pushed through an Israel aid package with cuts to the IRS and without money for Ukraine, setting the stage for a huge showdown with the Senate and the White House. And oh yes, a government shutdown looms at the end of next week, and both chambers are nowhere near a plan to avert it. Of course, Johnson is facing anger also from hard-right members who are calling for a much more aggressive approach with the White House and with Democrats. Republican voters across the country are sick and tired of Republicans because they never do anything to hold, uh, hold this government accountable. Republicans go out on the campaign trail and go on TV and do their five-minute hearing videos and, and post up on social media and say all this garbage about how they're going to fight it and stop it. So I feel like many of the American people that think that Republicans in Congress completely fail them. I feel the same way, and I'm a Republican member of Congress. Now, Green also warned Johnson that if he agrees to a deal for billions in aid to Ukraine, the MAGA base, she said, will be, quote, absolutely furious. Sungmin and Melanie are back with me. I mean, the, the big question for Johnson, he got that first bill done, but he has to compromise in order to get a deal with the Senate and with the White House to keep the government open, open potentially aid to Ukraine. How do we think he's going to deal with that more complicated issues of compromise, consensus and deal cutting? Right. Well, Speaker Johnson has made clear that at least out the gate, his priority is passing bills that can pass the House GOP. He doesn't want to rely on Democratic support. And he's not even taking into account what Senate Republican leaders like Mitch McConnell are saying. He could have had a massive blowout bipartisan vote if he just had a standalone Israel Bay aid package. Instead, he conditioned it upon IRS spending cuts and made it a partisan exercise. The question, of course, is when is he going to compromise? Will he compromise? And can he do that without sparking a right-wing revolt? That was the challenge that Kevin McCarthy a faced, and he'll have the same problem. Exactly. Both on keeping the government open and potentially aid to Ukraine. He suggested you could compare aid to Ukraine with changes to make stricter border policies. Mark okay. Jill Green, for instance, would not accept that. This is how the Republicans view uh, support for Ukraine, according to a recent Gallup poll. 62% uh, in October of 2023 say the U.S. is doing too much to support Ukraine. That is up 12 points in the past year. I mean, this is the real challenge for the White House Sun Man is about the Republican divisions on Ukraine, is they're saying this is necessary now to support them in this war against Russia. Right. It is strategically why the White House wanted, and many Democrats and even some Republicans, want to group all of that aid together, aid to Israel, aid to Ukraine, along with some uh, changes to the border, or changes to border money, and also Taiwan as well. But you do see, because uh, they, they kind of see this as the last sort of big package that could move uh, before the 2024 elections, when we know that if this continues on, and if, if you try to have a vote on this in an election year, it would become much more toxic. But it's certainly causing a lot of tension within the White House and against uh, Speaker Johnson right now. I wrote about this in my story this morning, kind of detailing the White House's uh, growing relationship to, to the extent that they have one with uh, Speaker Johnson. And the first big clash that Speaker Johnson had with White House officials was in that situation room briefing the day after he became Speaker. He made it clear to them in this two-hour briefing that Israel had to get separated out from uh, uh, from Ukraine aid. And this got a lot of pushback from the administration officials, Dem lawmakers, and even some Republicans in the room. But Johnson is unapologetic at this point, And I think that's kind of how he's going to be governing for at least a little bit. Yeah, I mean, that's the big question, right? There's still an unknown quantity. Obviously. Yeah, and the relationship between him and Mitch McConnell is also interesting. They had not even met before Mike Johnson yeah. became speaker, which is pretty remarkable. But Mitch McConnell, for him, Ukraine aid is a legacy issue. Yeah. And it has put him out of step with members of his own party, which mm -hmm. is kind of an unusual spot to see Mitch McConnell. The problem for Johnson is that without Republicans in the Senate unified behind him and his strategy, it makes it harder yeah. for Johnson to pursue that approach. So we'll see what happens. Uh, but time is running out, and there's a sense that all of this might get wound up together with the government funding deadline, yeah. November 17th. It could all become another big cliff for them. Yeah, the Senate Republican, House Republican dynamic. We'll see how that plays out as they avoid a government shutdown. Can they avoid government shutdown? We'll see. Thank you both.